it is time we discuss different scan types that we can do with Nmap. Now, Nmap is a huge tool and it offers many different types of scans that we can perform and we will be covering just some since there are a lot of them. However, at the end of this video, I will give you a really good tip as to how you can really master the Nmap tool. Talking about different scans doesn't necessarily mean that we will get different results. Matter of fact, many of these different scans will give us the same result. And in this video, I am going to explain exactly what the differences are between certain scans. To fully understand this, you will need a background knowledge on TCP and UDP. So, in case you didn't watch the short video I made on TCP and UDP, make sure to watch it before covering this. Let's start with the first type of scan, and that scan is called TCP SYN scan. Let me open the terminal. The command that we must run is nmap ss, and then we're going to be scanning Metasploitable in this video, since that is the machine that we are attacking. So the IP address of my Metasploitable is 192.168.1.6, and this dash ss is TCP SYN scan. SYN scan is probably the most popular scan in nmap. It can be performed quickly, scanning thousands of ports per second on networks that aren't protected by a firewall. And the reason why it is called a SYN scan is because it never really opens a full TCP connection. You only perform the first step of three-way handshake, which is sending SYN. And the way it works is, if the target sends SYNAC back for a certain port, that indicates that that port is listening or it is open. Target can also send something called RST, which stands for reset, which would indicate that the port is closed. In case it doesn't give any response back after several tries, port will be marked as filtered. And filtered is just another state of ports that happens once Nmap cannot determine whether a certain port is open or closed. The filtered state could happen if port is for example protected by some filtering or a firewall. And now that we know exactly how TCP SYN scan works, let's test it out on our Metasploitable. There is one thing with this command. If I try to run it, it will not work. It will tell me, you requested a scan type which requires root privileges. And the reason this requires root privileges is because we are only sending one part of three-way handshake and telling our machine that we do not want to respond to a SYNAC bit set in case it is sent back from the target. That requires root privileges. So we must run this with sudo. sudo nmap ss, and then let's type in our password. And we will notice it gives us the results of ports that are open very fast. And it is also very important and satisfying once we know how certain scan type works. Once again, it sends only the SYN and waits for a SYNAC or RST, and it never establishes a full TCP connection. Let us check out the result. So we got these ports open, and we also got what service is running on those open ports. Now, here is the time that it took, and we are going to compare this with different scans. And the reason it finished this fast is, once again, it doesn't establish a connection. Compared to this SYN scan that we just performed, we also got something called TCP Connect Scan or also labeled as dash st. So in order to run this, we can just change this command from dash ss to dash st. And you will see all of these options if you run the help menu of nmap. What's interesting about this is that it does not require sudo privileges. And the reason it does not require is because it performs a normal TCP three-way handshake connection. So the only difference between this and previous scan is that TCP connect scan establishes a full connection. The important part here that you should remember is that this scan will leave much more trace that you performed an Nmap scan on the target machine, and it is easily detected. That's why once you can run Nmap as root, usually SYN scan will be a better option than the TCP connect scan. Nonetheless, let's test this one out so we can remove sudo, as it does not require root privileges, and you will see it also finishes relatively fast. The output will be exactly the same as with the SYN scan, but 
Sometimes it could take a little bit longer than the SYN scan since it is performing a full TCP connection. And even though we got the exact same result, which are just the open ports and the services that they run, now we know how both of these scans work. And now you know that for example this scan is much more detectable than the SYN scan. Or you can say that it just makes more noise on target machine. The last scan that we're going to cover, and keep in mind these are just some of the scans and I will show you where you can find the rest of them and possibly test them out if you want to. But the next scan that I'm going to cover is pretty unpopular and that is the dash SU scan or also known as UDP scan. The reason why it's unpopular is because many services on the internet run over TCP protocol, as we already know. Since UDP scanning is much slower than TCP scanning, and more difficult, sometimes when people are developing security for their ports, they ignore the UDP ports. And this results in a mistake as there are a lot of exploitable UDP services and we should never ignore this scan just because it takes time. Let us test it out. This also will require sudo privileges, so let us type sudo nmap-su for the UDP scan and specify the IP address of Metasploitable. You will notice this scan will take time. You can check at how much percent it is currently at by pressing the upper arrow key. So if I press upper arrow key, down here it will tell me it is currently at 3%. And I'm just going to leave this running while I show you the cool tip for the Nmap. So remember this, the key to learning Nmap in great details is not in reading its help menu, but in reading its manual. And to open the nmap manual, you can open your terminal and type manual nmap. And let me do this in a second terminal. So I will open it up, type man, and then nmap. This man right here is shortened for manual. Press enter. In this file, it explains every nmap option in great detail. Let us find different scan types that also exist since we didn't really cover every one of them. Let's scroll all the way down to different Nmap scans. And as we're scrolling, you will see that we are passing the actual help menu that we get outputted once we run the dash dash help. And below this help menu, it explains every option in great details. And as I'm scrolling, I came to this part, which says port scanning basics. and here are the six port states recognized by Nmap. And this is good to read, so we got the open port state, the closed port state, we got filtered port state, unfiltered port state, open and filtered, and closed and filtered. So if you want, read through this, it is really useful knowing once you get, for example, filtered port to know exactly what that means. And if I go a little bit more down, here they are. Here are the different scan types that Nmap has. So here is the TCP SYN scan that we performed, which is dash SS. Here is the dash ST, which is full TCP connection scan. And down here you will notice after the UDP scan that we got different options as to how we can perform our scan. And you can read about each and every one of them and see when are they useful and how you can specify them. Here is the TCP X scan. Here's the TCP window scan, and you will see there are a lot of them. There are also different options such as this scan flags, which is custom TCP scan, but this is an advanced option and we might take a look at this later on. Here is idle scan, echo scan, let's see all the way down, IP protocol scan, FTP relay host, FTP bound scan, and that would pretty much be it for the Nmap scans. So depending on your target and what you exactly want to get from this scan, you would pick one of them. So for example, if you wanted to discover open ports, you would use the TCP SYN scan. Now the X scan, I believe, which is the dash SA, which we saw a few seconds ago, is useful, I believe, to mapping out the firewall. Just read through them if you have time and you will discover how they work and when are they useful. So let's see how much percentage our UDP scan is at. So it has finished about a third of the scan and we know that this will take at least 10 to 15 more minutes so we're not going to wait this. And by the way about the 
nmap manual, you don't need to read that entire file, just it is good to know that it exists. So sometimes when you forget something or you want to check out if nmap has some other option that you need, you can just open that manual and read until you find what you need. Nobody expects you to know everything inside of that file. But after some time, you will start picking some of the commands up and memorizing them. Cool. We covered a lot in this video. The next two videos will be even more important. We're going to check how we can discover operating systems that our target machines run and what versions of services are they running on an open port. Which is, remember, one of the most important things that we want to find.